Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone's doing well today, that everyone is seen clearly. As we talk about our gospel reading today, we'll find about, about a man who could very much see clearly and yet was blind. We'll see how our sight is doing as we go through the service today. With that, though, let us stand as we sing our opening hymn, hymn 915. Today, your mercy calls us, and if you're joining us online, you can download the bulletin through the church website. Thank you. 
morning. Good morning. The Old Testament is found in Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud, aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, The Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the furthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman, and she who is in labor, together a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by the brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle found in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save, save, save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercessions for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, sustained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did not once and for all, since he did this once and for all when he offered himself up. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of the gospel. Our gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the response room, which is printed on the top of page 7 of your bulletin. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. You may be seated for the as we reflect on God's law, we hear it convict us. We hear that in it we are found blind, without sight, unable to walk the way God would want us to walk. And so I ask you, what is the Tenth Commandment? What 
does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, or workers, or animals, or turn them against him, but hurt them to stay and to be their duty. And now we stand as we hear God's gospel story confessed through the Apostles' Creed to the world around us and to each other. When someone asks what you believe, you can respond by saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's gospel, we now pray to our Father, boldly and confidently saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We don't have children today, so in lieu of me blindfolding all of you, I need you to close your eyes, cover them tightly, hold your hand over them. Everyone, I can see if you're cheating. <laughs> cover your eyes, hold your hands, okay? <laughs> you hear Jesus coming, and so now all cry out together, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Oh, be quiet. Be quiet. Stop, stop bothering the rabbi. Say it again. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus invites you forward. Imagine yourself coming to Jesus. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes, that, that, eyes closed. You're so blind. <laughs> Imagine in your mind being carried forward, being held by the hand you brought before your teacher's feet. And then Jesus asks, what would you like me to do for you? Please respond by saying, my eyes my God. My God. Let me recover my sight. Let me recover my sight. Go. Your faith has made you well. Open your eyes and gaze upon the very cross that has healed you. Open your eyes and see Jesus who has healed you of all your sins. Not only your sins, of dimness of sight, but your sin of original falling before God in all creation. Let us pray. Yes, repeat after me. <laughs> Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you, thank, thank you for healing blind Bartimaeus. For healing blind Bartimaeus, and thank you. Thank you for healing me, for healing me of all the blindnesses, of all the blindnesses of my sin. Of my sin. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. We continue by singing hymn 551, When to our world the Savior came. <laughs>
your brothers and sisters in Christ. In our gospel reading today, we hear a dialogue between Jesus and a man on the roadside. Except, in this case, the man is blind, yet he sees Jesus as the one who can restore his sight. And of course, he's correct in that assumption as Jesus takes the initiative, asking the first question, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man answers, Rabbi, I want to see. As we think about this wonderful event, a question might well bubble up in our mind. Frame something along this, like this. I already can see, can't I? Or do I need to ask Jesus to let me see? And the answer depends. See, it depends on your understanding. Because there is sight and there is insight. What we know is that without a doubt, whether or not we see, whether or not we can see physically, that each of us needs from Jesus the gift of spiritual sight or insight. And so let's see what we can see. We know that only a little that we've been told about Bartimaeus, his father's name was Timaeus, because Bartimaeus literally means Bar Timaeus, or son of Timaeus. And so we guess that he probably also lived in Jericho since he was sitting along the road near that city. But other than that, and the fact that he was a blind beggar, we don't see any other information in this account. But oh, what a man he is. A man of insight indeed. He reveals very much to us. He helps us see things clearly. And so we thank God for a man like Bartimaeus, who is an inspiring example for us. He may have been blind, but he was a good listener. It's been said that when people lose one sense, that often other, other senses seem to gain strength. And there's no doubt that in the case of Bartimaeus, that he did have keen hearing. It, it's kind of within our imagination to think that as he sat along the roadside, day in and day out, dragging day after dragging day, he listened to the conversations of those who walked by. Interesting conversations by interesting people who walked on this main thoroughfare coming from all parts of the land. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they saw a blind man and treated him like he was deaf as well, talking with no regard to propriety or who might be listening to their conversations. So whether from this listening or through other means, Bartimaeus had knowledge of Jesus and acts on that knowledge. In fact, Mark records that Bartimaeus had heard of this Jesus of Nazareth before. Apparently he knew of the reports that Jesus had unique powers to make the lame walk, to cleanse lepers, to make the deaf hear, and even to raise the dead. He knew that Jesus was from the line of David. And from the sacred Old Testament scriptures, he knew of the promises that said a son of David's line would ascend to the throne and reign forever. <laughs> this new Davidic king would then usher in an era of mercy and grace unlike any that had come before. He would defeat evil and establish the kingdom of God. Bartimaeus sees now an opportunity come to him as if from heaven itself. He leaps into action and begins to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. The many attempted to rebuke and silence him. Bartimaeus cried out all the more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
his determination, had come from a conviction formed by faith. This one can help me. This one can restore me. Which makes me then think of the words that our risen Lord Jesus will speak to Thomas sometime later. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. When our Lord Jesus hears the cries of Bartimaeus, he does what is <coughs> unexpected by the crowd, but anticipated by those who know him. He stands still. He stops in his tracks. And that act of stopping for Bartimaeus is a poignant example, a gesture of mercy. The son of David, in whom is the divine royalty, who is the very son of God, stops for the sake of a blind beggar. And then he commands, call him. And so when the crowd sees their mistake in chiding this blind man, they come forward and with graciousness in their voices, they say, oh, fortunate man, he smiles at you. Get up now, he is calling you. I'm sure you can imagine the unnerving feeling that must have gone through Jesus at the reaction of the crowd. First against this blind man and then for him. Moving from opinion to opinion based on the prevailing mood. Like a wind that blows for the one whom they most wish to impress with their piety. The crowd's fickleness and insincere flattery is unnervingly familiar. Because I see the same behavior in us today for those we think might do us some good. And yet, ignoring the duplicity of the crowd, Jesus asked Bartimaeus the question, what do you want me to do for you? It is surely not improper to hear in the question a touch of a gentle humor and goodwill. The question is asked so that the blind man and put the answer before the crowd, before the world, for all generations. Jesus gives him the opportunity to confess his faith, shared not only by him, but by all the Christians of all times, past and present, as he says, Rabbi, I want to see. Our dear Lord Jesus answers him, with an action and a word of declaration showing the son of David's mercy that not only did Jesus have time for Bartimaeus, but that Jesus also knew this man's deepest yearning, his heart's desire. As he doesn't respond by saying, your sight has been restored, but by saying, go your way, your faith has made you well should be no surprise to us then. <laughs> These words, as they come from the word of God made flesh, actually do what they say. As in creation, when the word commanded, let there be light, and there was light. And so now, from that same word, has issued a similar command. And the formerly blind man has been made well. The formerly blind man can now see created life. A merciful miracle? Well, yes. But the greater mercy is that what the restored sight has allowed this blind Bartimaeus to do next. As our text says, immediately he recovered his sight and followed him all the way. To understand that last line, you have to understand the context of this story in the Gospel of Mark. You see, it's more than coincidence that this miracle of sight comes as Jesus is heading for Jerusalem for the last time. Heading towards Jerusalem for his crucifixion and resurrection. 
In fact, if you review the events that are recorded for us by Mark, that have led up to this point on this journey, it's no small indication that in it we see people with hardness of sight. People who have difficulty in understanding the reason for it all. In fact, you might even say they themselves have been blinded by sin. In Mark 10, 2-12, the Pharisees insisted that a legalistic keeping of the rules is necessary for salvation. In verses 17-30, Jesus calls his potential disciples to have a life of total devotion to him and to his Father. In verses 35-45, the disciples strove to take themselves to the highest positions of honor on earth and in the kingdom to come. Jesus, however, exalted the need to give oneself for the sake of others. Because all of us are children of Adam and Eve, we all have inherited a human nature corrupted by sin. We all are blind spiritually. We all have a desperate need, not just for sight, but for insight. And the tender story of Bartimaeus stands forever with what, to us with what is a call to have and be greater in our vision. To have that greater than mere eyesight. For the past three Sundays, the disciples have been confronted by the events of this last journey of Jesus in our gospel readings. And so, like them, we are convicted. Rabbi, let me recover my sight, should be the cry coming from our lips. We, like blind Bartimaeus, need to cry, Son of David, have mercy on us, for it is not just Bartimaeus who is in need today. It is us, too. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, let me recover my sight. May I be given the gift of true insight that will lead me to look to you and see the Son of God, who would save me from my spiritual blindness. Amen. When John the Baptist was languishing in prison, he sent his disciples to Jesus to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In Matthew 11, verses 4 to 5, Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. How miraculous that we poor sinners are healed by Christ Jesus, the Son of David, who takes away the sin of the world and has mercy on us, just as he had mercy of blind Bartimaeus. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now worship God with our tithes and offerings. And as the offering plates are at the door, uh, if you'd like to put an offering in there still, there will be some there as you exit as well. The offerings that are in there already, though, will bring forward as we sing together verses 1 and 3 of hymn 894 on the top of page 9. Please stand. <laughs>
them by saying, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, that we might live in peace and harmony, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, for relief from the drought and thankfulness for the rain we receive, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For baby Asher and family, for Lolita Alston, Carrie Blackwell, Ed Vaughn, Cheryl Broadhagen, Ray Broadhagen, Deb Eicher, Bonnie Hayes, Jerry Henneman, Trudy Hoyman, Mary Matthew, Max, Beth McCabe, Paul McCall, Carmen Miller, Brooke DeCray, Kylie Plantine, Aspen Rydell in Thanksgiving for her birth, Ron and Ann Sam, Shirley Schlofeld, Ron Sela, Mark Salisbury, Scott Spindler, the Sheely family, and Bill Whithams. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray together the call for the day, which is printed on your bulletin in the middle of page 9. O oh God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in saying the morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
faithful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn in 846, Your Hands, O Lord, in Days of Old. Thank <laughs> you. 
forgotten that. Uh, that being said, we will continue in the book of Hebrews, and so join us for that as we have a lot of fun talking about that. Uh, this week, though, the ladies' group Bible study is still on Mondays at 1.30. Uh, so-and-so's and prayer group is at Wednesday. Uh, please join us as you're able to for all uh, the different activities and events, and rejoice as we see Christ in our midst. Amen. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Yes, I just want to say something about the Christmas child boxes. Oh, I've got three left. They're partially full, so if you'd like to finish fin- filling them, that would be great. And I'll be picking them up then on the 5th of November. And I believe they're just sitting on the, the yes. back right there in the north. Yeah. Yeah. Any other announcements? All right, with that, we go forward on our way, healed by faith. <laughs>